Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical storage and um, this is module number 3 um, uh, on lithium batteries and this is lecture 13. So, here uh, I will show um, what is the genesis of various types of voltage profile between uh, different types of electrode material. So far we have talked about intercalation material, alloy, conversion material. So uh, do you get a similar type of pattern uh, voltage versus uh, lithium uh, composition uh, or uh, you get uh, different types of uh, pattern and what are the genesis of that. So, uh, we will again uh, talk about the phase diagram uh, from the free energy composition, uh, how they are related. Then we will estimate the voltage profile from free energy composition diagram. Then we will explain the theoretical aspects of the free energy composition diagram. Then uh, we will have certain case studies for the estimation of voltage profile for various electrode materials. And uh, finally, the differential capacity plot which I showed in one of the uh, my uh, earlier lectures, differential capacity plot, the illustration of their usefulness that I will cover. So, we will start with uh, again the free energy uh, composition diagram and uh, the phase diagram of uh, a binary component system. Uh, one is a pure uh, component uh, which is defined as A and another side is pure lithium. So, sometimes in some of my slide uh, instead of A I put X and uh, the right hand side is always lithium. So, lithium content increases here and it forms various types of uh, solid solution uh, and mixture of solid solution. So, if you go by this uh, particular red line. Uh, then uh, you end up with uh, the free energy versus lithium um, diagram like this which already I explained and if you go by this blue line then this kind of uh, free energy versus composition diagram one can uh, easily identify. So, in the previous lecture we observed how this phase diagram can be constructed from this uh, free energy composition diagram. So, we explained the genesis of this. In isothermal in, in intersection of lithium in different materials through alloying reactions, the system passes through several phase field as you can see which represent the state of the system. So, in continuation to this, we will now establish how this alloying process result in the generation of cell potential and capacity. So, in earlier lecture, we saw how lithium can alloy with pure element X. So, as I told in here, I have uh, defined the left part as X uh, to form a lithium X binary alloys wherein the lithium distributed homogeneously in the alloy. So, remember the uh, diagram that I showed where lithium and this X component and sometimes I define as A. So, they are homogeneously distributed. This type of alloying reaction is called a solid solution alloying reactions wherein this reaction is a single phase reaction. So, the free energy change due to mixing of the component with another to form a solution. So, I can have this uh, uh, G 1 in solution uh, minus uh, this uh, uh, G i uh, in pure case and that is equated with R T L n into the activity. So, you suppose that in x mole of this X component is mixed with N Li moles of lithium to form this binary alloy. So, I am defining uh, this composition. So, the free energy before mixing you can write with this equation where N X and 
gx and in li and gli is already defined and after mixing this is nx gx plus nli gli so this is after mixing so free energy change due to mixing is just this minus this so we will work out with nx del gx plus nli del gli simple calculations now molar free energy change of the mix uh, so that is in mole and divided by the total mole so that is the molar fraction so that rtl and ai uh, sorry ax plus mole fraction of li rtl and activity of li so if you consider an ideal solution where this activity uh, coefficient is 1, then this free energy mixing is RT into XX ln XX plus XLI ln XLI. So the figure that uh, is shown here, uh, we can plot the free energy of mixing against the composition of lithium usually with the lithium composition it is shown. And you can get the uh, plot of the free energy of mixing against the composition. So I will ask you to try this plot, try to plot this function in Excel or Origin or any other graphical uh, software to actually see that you are getting this kind of uh, uh, shape. So, one can also estimate that this molar free energy of mixing for lithium, this is the free energy uh, um, change of the mixing in the ideal case plus xx then del of this del gm ideal by del x lithium and this is nothing but the chemical potential of lithium. So, this relation I have derived it for you. Initially, I thought that you can derive it yourself, but later I thought that let us derive it. So, this is uh, shown as this tangent. You can see that at this particular composition, if you take and uh, you draw a tangent here, then this uh, molar. Uh, chemical potential um, uh, uh, of lithium and this X component you can easily identify. So, for the um, construction in the previous slide, we can see that uh, this is the intercept which is the tangent drawn at a composition mixed with the line XLI equal to 1. So, with this if you draw the tangent which is passing through this uh, lithium composition, you get the uh, chemical potential for lithium. So, let us try to solve this. So, G is the molar free energy after mixing. So, you can write this relation and again this will all be subscript, this will all be subscript. Then differentiate this relation. Now, earlier I proved the gibbs duhem equation. So, this part, the rate part is gibbs duhem equation and that is equal to 0. So, you have dg equal to this plus this. Now, from the consideration that x mole of lithium and x mole of x that is basically the total mixture. So, this relation is valid. So, I can always differentiate this and then you put the value of dxx here, replace it with minus dxli. So, your dg is uh, uh, free energy of lithium minus free energy of x component into dxli. So, therefore, your gli is gx plus the partial differentiation of del g with respect to del x lithium. 
So, in this equation if you multiply both sides with x x then we get x x of g l i and here also x x of g x and x x of del g by del x l i. Then you add this term x l i g l i in both side so you get this relation. So, that leads you to g l i of x is g mix plus x x of del g by del x l i. So, differentiation of this, this will give you this relation which is nothing but the tangent and that gives the uh, chemical potential for lithium in the solid solution phase. So, the cell potential with respect to lithium uh, redox couple uh, is a standard redox couple is related to chemical potential and this already we have uh, uh, talked about several times this relation. So, your lithium uh, is here for uh, this particular composition if you take then draw a tangent here and uh, for uh, uh, pure uh, lithium, uh, pure lithium uh, it is in this state, in this state. So, the difference uh, uh, you can get, uh, this difference you can get and similarly, uh, if you take this composition, here your lithium potential is here and uh, this one is uh, here again. Uh, so, this value, if you take the lithium potential value, uh, with respect to this two composition, then the voltage certainly will get affected. So, we can see it diagrammatically here. So, here the difference is this and this. So, this difference is relatively small as compared to this difference, uh, this difference which is much larger. So, when lithium composition is low, then it is in this side. Uh, the higher potential side. When it is relatively higher, then the potential drops down. So, it, get, it gets a S type of curve. So, you can apply that Gibbs phase rule which says the degree of freedom is number of component minus phase plus 2. So, this is solid solution type allowing reaction in single phase and involves two component. Since the temperature and pressure is generally uh, constant, uh, then the phase rule modifies to degree of freedom is nothing but C minus P. So, here the component is 2 and phase is 1. So, only 1 degree of freedom is there. So, that means it implies that the chemical potential can be modified when the composition of this system is changed. Due to this fact, the cell potential change as a function of composition which results this sloping charge discharge profile. So, this is as simple as that. Now, another type of half cell where you use lithium and in a particular um, alloy uh, which is having multi phase formation. So, two different phase formation you can see. So, whenever alloying of lithium with pure metal X to form LIX type of binary alloy that involved multiple phase formation. You remember the phase diagram you have alpha then alpha plus beta and beta. So, there are several phases. So, each phase can assume to behave like a solid solution or a line compound within the part of the whole composition range. You remember the phase diagram which I showed earlier. So, one such example is shown here in two phase can be obtained in lithium X alloy. One is lithium rich and another one is lithium deficient. Pictographically that also I have shown in one of my earlier slides. You remember with small circles colored in different uh, one is red and another one was green. So, when you draw a common tangent uh, between two curves which needs some kind of special attention. So, an alloy with X L i marked by the point R. So, that is in between here. 
that will have the least free energy if it exists as a form of mixture of two phases marked as alpha and beta from the phase diagram. With being alpha is the phase of composition XLI marked by Q, so this part and beta is the phase of composition XLI marked by S, so this. So, the relative weight fraction of this two phase is such that the lithium mole fraction is the point which is marked by R that is from the standard phase diagram and applying the lever rule in it. So, the mole fraction of beta is given by QR this divided by the whole QS and mole fraction of alpha which is in this side that is given by RS divided by the whole QS. Now, the feature that is worth noting is that the chemical potential of lithium in the alloys remains the same in the common tangent, right. So, the chemical potential will remain same here along with the common tangent. Therefore, the cell potential will not be dramatically affected. So, the cell potential is independent of this composition. So, in the common tangent region, you can see that the cell potential will remain constant and if you apply phase rule here also, so component and phase this 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So, that means you cannot change anything. So, the with the composition of lithium your voltage will remain same, but when you have the single phase solid solution then as I showed earlier you will have this kind of drop. So, this is typical for multi phase for the alloy which forms a multi phase and therefore, you can correlate the free energy composition diagram with the voltage that is resulting from it. So, another type of half cell uh, where this alloy formation take place this also I have defined in antimony and uh, lithium case. So, here the first plateau the reaction is lithium reacts with antimony to form Li 2 Sb which is given by this line and the value of E that is minus del G formation of Li 2 Sb by 2 F because 2 electrons are involved and uh, this is uh, can be calculated I will show it uh, that it will be uh, about 912 millivolt around, uh, around that. And for the second plateau, whatever you are getting again, it is a two phase mixture. Uh, this is given by this relation. So, uh, the formation free energy is uh, for Li3Sb minus formation of Li2Sb. So, that is this two component Li2Sb and Li3Sb. So, the voltage is 871 millivolt and this kind of step profile you will get in this type of alloy. Another example can be shown where it is a ternary kind of phase system. So, this is uh, already I have explained how it forms. So, if you have lithium alloying uh, across this line then uh, for tin cadmium this binary alloy lithium will progressively form various types of alloying initially it will start to form with this cadmium will remain like this and then another voltage uh, which you can calculate back this two will form and then uh, these two phases will form which is apparent from this phase diagram and for this type of multiple alloying reaction for this uh, um, 
so, solid solution, this uh, intermetallates, you will get this kind of uh, step profile. So, the duet of different potential at which tin and cadmium alloy with lithium phases form from each component can be electrochemically active while the others are being inactive. The inactive phase can act as a mechanically strengthening agent as I have told that when lithium comes in then the volume expansion can be buffered by this metallic element uh, while the other phase that alloy with lithium. So, the, the presence of this uh, uh, metal uh, eventually at this stage at least it can uh, reduce the volume expansion and uh, uh, buffer the stress which is generated. In case of lithium graphite uh, alloy formation, the simplest model that forming a solution um, that is the ideal solution that I described this relation. Uh, this is a bit modified. So, in real, real solution the free energy is never equal to the ideal case due to the variation in the activity with the composition. So, when carbon and lithium they form this kind of alloy then it is not considered as an ideal solution. So, one can use another popular solution model which is termed as regular solution model where uh, along with this uh, you have uh, another term which is added and uh, this is actually defined by omega into molar fraction of x and lithium x in this case is carbon. So, such free energy change is also results a two phase reaction which is prevalent in case of graphite as well. So, delta that uh, eventually some kind of uh, penalty term for mixing that uh, depends on the component which is involved. So, uh, here also the step type of reaction that takes place and as I told the value of S in the last lecture starting from 4, 3, 2 and 1 and this alloying takes, takes place and progressively the voltage uh, step kind of voltage profile that you get the lowest one is here. So, in such regular solution the activity coefficient um, that can be defined by this relation. I will try to um, frame a assignment problem to better illustrate this. So, ln gamma x this is C x l i whole square and ln gamma l i is C x a uh, whole square. So, this uh, will be illustrated uh, in the assignment problem set. So, the voltage correspond to this is uh, actually you can see in this view graph as well. So, phase transformation already I defined uh, in case of lithium cobalt oxide, several phase transformation that is possible. So, in case lithium cobalt oxide hexagonal O3 structure becomes a stage 2 compound with formula of uh, typical formula of Li 0.1 to cobalt oxide at full delithiation O1 type of cobalt oxide form around the region x equal to 0.45 the material adopts a P3 structure all this I have explained in my last lecture which coexist with O3 phase in this uh, region when the lithium content is in between 0.45 to 0.2. Although there is a discrepancy in the literature, the presence of a second monoclinic phase in the region typically here. So, here oxygen start to release um, and that is associated with O1 phase. The practicable usable capacity when charging potential is higher than 4.2 then this oxygen evolution cannot be avoided. 
So, we will limit the lithium extraction from lithium cobalt oxide because of this structural complicacy up to 0 0.5, up to 5.5 lithium. So, according to the Faraday law, if you estimate the capacity, we will find the est estimated capacity of lithium cobalt oxide is pretty large, uh, but actually it is halved because you are not able to extract the whole lithium out of it. So, uh, I have uh, uh, given a typical charge discharge profile of uh, lithium manganese oxide, a well known spinel. Uh, so, you can try to identify based on the uh, lecture that uh, we had uh, so far we are discussing. Uh, you can try to identify and make a possible mechanism of operation. So, what is happening during charging up to this, what is happening in this plateau and during discharge what is happening here and what is also happening here and what is happening here. So, based on the discussion, I leave it on you to provide an explanation uh, and uh, come up with your answer. A special case is uh, lithium iron phosphate where this regular solution model uh, uh, is prevalent uh, than the ideal uh, solution model. Uh, we talked about the excess free energy term, this alters the free energy change due to mixing. So, as shown in the figure. So, this term when this omega term increases, then from regular uh, this type of uh, bold type of uh, free energy diagram as you increase this uh, uh, delta term, you see that slowly it goes to a two minima condition. So, for very high uh, omega value, the curve transition to a W type of curve. So, there are three composition where this partial derivative of free energy with x is 0, one is x 1, another one is uh, uh, x 1 dash and uh, here uh, another one is x 1 and the third one is uh, x of uh, lithium which is here. So, this three cases uh, you have this partial derivative is 0 and two compositions where the second derivative is 0. So, this two composition this x 2 and uh, this x 2 dash which is uh, in between this slope uh, it is 0. So, between the composition of x 2 and x 2 dash uh, this composition are unstable and immediately decomposes into x 1 and x 1 dash phase. So, in spite of having the scenario wherein the concentration gradient is negative, the diffusion occurs to facilitate the decomposition process. So, the composition or rather concentration of lithium in one of the phase increase during this transformation. The important part is that the transformation does not occur via a nucleation process so that is very important as it is still a single phase consideration. So, there is a I remember in case of the alloy we talked about uh, say antimony and tin. So, this nucleates and then grows, but this is not a two phase system. So, there is simply a redistribution of lithium in the material during the decomposition without any nucleation of a new phase. So, this particular process that is known as spinodal decomposition, uh, which um, uh, some of the metallurgists may be familiar of. And the region x 1 uh, to x 2 and x 2 dash, uh, x 2 dash to uh, x 1 they are actually metastable regions. So, now if you uh, have the voltage profile due to this spinoidal decomposition, uh, the stable voltage profile is generated 
uh, whatever is generated is this uh, uh, flat voltage profile and this is occurring at a relatively uh, lower current of discharge. However, when a very high current rates are applied then this metastable region uh, that can also uh, be accessed and solid st solution type behavior you can see where this sloping profile you can see here right. In spite of that the unstable composition regions usually they are never accessed except for a very high current probably it will look like this. But like the two phase type of alloy always you get a flat profile like this one not the one that has been shown here except for a very high current. So, the mechanism of the these two things are very different, but the profile is more or less similar in nature. Now, um, once you get the discharge profile uh, like uh, uh, the one uh, like this and this, uh, in order to better understand this profile what we do, we do a uh, differential capacity uh, plot where we plot the dq dv uh, where q is the charge uh, the capacity uh, with respect to voltage and plot it with the respective voltage to get this kind of uh, dq dv curve. So, particularly for the step reaction for alloy uh, materials uh, we do this thing and wherever the oxidation and reduction takes place. Uh, uh, this is this gives a very sharp because there is a change in slope. Uh, so, there is a very sharp uh, uh, peak uh, oxidation and reduction peak um, that is uh, observed and uh, schematically it is shown for uh, various uh, compositions through the X-ray diffraction studies and each of this. Uh, particular phase is identified whether indeed during oxidation and reduction this kind of uh, alloys are forming. You can stop your measurement right at that point and then this electrode you can uh, do the X-ray diffraction to identify the phase and then uh, indeed whether it is forming or not uh, that can be identified and at which voltage it is forming that also can be identified. So, this is a very useful technique uh, of differentiating the voltage profile They result several peaks which are characteristics of the reaction that is occurring. So, one way to identify the mechanism of operation is to collect the X-ray diffraction pattern at those voltages to identify this phase which are formed in those voltage ranges. So, this above data, this data is uh, our own data on a uh, system tin antimony copper. Uh, so, tin and antimony they indeed form uh, alloy with lithium and copper acts as a buffer layer. So, the stress uh, basically is buffered through the dislocation movement along the slip plane. So, uh, that is uh, I have cited as one of the examples. So, uh, again uh, there are two uh, important uh, publications that uh, is the study material for this part of the work and uh, this, uh, uh, this two uh, papers uh, will give you a more, uh, more uh, insight about the topic covered. So, here in this uh, particular lecture uh, I have uh, um, demonstrated that how to obtain the phase diagram from free energy composition diagram, um, then how to get the voltage profile uh, from free energy composition, then basis of the yield of free energy composition diagram and voltage profile, a theoretical illustration has been done and I will suggest you to do a line by line calculation uh, to estimate the straight line, the tangential line that gives you the estimation of mu of lithium 
and then point by point analysis of the free energy versus composition diagram to see the exact voltage profile in case of a single phase or at least binary phase um, electrode material. And then a case study of estimation of voltage profile of various electrode material, uh, we will talk more on it uh, during the case study, the remaining two lectures, uh, solid solution type, phase mixture type, alloy type and the electrode which undergoes a spinodial decomposition. And finally, the illustration of the usefulness of differential capacity plot. Thank you for your attention.